Hey, 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 happy Wednesday. Come on in, pull up a chair. The Gaming Gang Dispatch is in the air. Howdy, 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 gang. Welcome once again to the Duck Tape Studios. I'm Jeff McLear, your host here at the Gaming Gang Dispatch. Brought to you by thegaminggang.com, of which I happen to be the founder and editor-in-chief. So welcome aboard. Tonight is Wednesday, January 19th, 2022. This is live stream 742. If you haven't uh, stopped in and checked out the show before, let me point out, super, super casual, just hanging out, talking about the latest in tabletop gaming news and taking a look at a tabletop game. Tonight, we're actually looking at a trio of items. That's right. I'm going to take a peek at Cairn. I grabbed this and I thought for a second, maybe I had accidentally grabbed Mothership. <laughs> that's why I glanced. I was like, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay, it, it is Karen. We're going to take a look at Mothership as well. And Original Edition Campaign. So we've got a trio of kind of zine-sized releases here. Two of them are full-fledged games. One is uh, kind of tips and tricks and house rules for OD&D, which interestingly enough, we took a look at the Iron Falcon role-playing game last night, which essentially is OD&D, plus the fourth Greyhawk book. So there's that, pretty sweet, nice. Anyway, also should point out, if you like this video, by all means, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you do subscribe, ding that bell. It'll not only let you know when the Dispatch streams live Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday evenings right here on YouTube, but it'll also let you know when I upload other videos such as last night's review of Dungeons & Dragons Original Adventures Reincarnated Volume 1 Into the Borderlands from Goodman Games. <laughs> so if you had any uh, interest or if you were curious about these original adventures reincarnated books, got the first review. I, of course, have done unboxings of all six volumes, including the Temple of Elemental Evil, and more reviews are on the way. So keep that in mind as well. Of course, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more. You know the drill. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. And lastly, this is a live stream, so that means chat is available. It's not on screen. It's one of the ways I keep some of the more unusual commenters at bay. And you must be a subscriber for at least 48 hours to be able to take part in chat. Yet another way, I try to keep some of the more unusual commenters at bay. Although we don't get too many, too many people getting all, you know, crazy on us or anything like that. <laughs> so let's see, who do we got in chat tonight? We got John Vogel. John Vogel's hanging out. Wishing it's a War Game Wednesday, but it's not. It's not a War Game Wednesday. It's just not. You won't see one all throughout January. That doesn't mean I'm not doing War Gaming coverage. We'll talk about that a little bit later, because I got a lot of videos on the horizon. And I'll talk about what's coming up. Something just showed up today that I did not think I was going to receive. So I was 
Well, okay, I take that back. I didn't think I was going to receive it until I got an email. I think it was day before yesterday. Maybe it was, maybe it was yesterday. I was like, oh, hey, cool. So Doug Roberts is with us flaming here on who happens to be one of our chat moderators is with us. I believe it is a gaming night for our other chat moderator, Madman. So I don't think we'll be seeing the Motor City Madman tonight. Uh, I'm sure he'll, you know, stop by and check out the video later on. Mr. Eddie T is with us. Very, very nice. Who else we got? I think that is it. Yep, that's what we've got going on so far in chat. Sweet. Very, very nice. Okay, so I got a package today. I'm going to do a first look video tomorrow. I got a, I got a bunch of stuff going on tomorrow, So, but I, I will get this done. Yes, that's right. I got the D&D Rules Expansion gift set from Wizards of the Coast with the foil covers and so on. And I believe this also has a Dungeon Master's screen in it. And of course, what everybody's interested in is the Monsters of the Multiverse volume that's in here. And that is what I will focus on in tomorrow's video, I will do an unboxing, show what's in this slipcase set. But keep in mind, I am only going to do a page through for Monsters of the Multiverse because I have reviewed the other two books. So it's kind of silly for me to sit there and, all right, you know what? Let's, uh, let's page through Tasha's cauldron of everything. Come on, everybody. I know I reviewed this and already did a page through, but I'm going to be like everybody else. And I'm just going to beat that Dungeons and Dragons horse until it's far beyond dead. I don't do that. You know, I don't do that. I I'll shoot one video showing the monsters, the multiverse book, as opposed to other people who are like, okay, so this is our 32nd video. We're, uh, we're going to be sharing. We're going to, We'll be sharing a video of uh, three minutes. Mr. Eddie T's asking, so am I streaming on Thursdays? No, it will be a standalone video. It will not be live. Uh, I shoot videos all throughout the week. So even though I'm not doing a live stream, I'm usually shooting some sort of video. Just like, for an example, the Into the Borderlands review. I did, I did that on, on, you know, a non-streaming day. Omanal has joined us in chat. Sweet. Very cool. Very, very cool. Also, do want to point out, and I'll mention this later on as I wrap up the show too, but next week, we are going to take a closer look at Old School Essentials from no, uh, Necrotic. I almost said Nomadic. Necrotic Gnome. Nomadic Chronic. And I will also have an interview with the creator, Gavin Norman. So stay tuned for that. I will also be tackling the advanced fantasy tomes that have been out of print. They've been out of print for a while. There's a new print run that has arrived. I'm going to talk about that during the news. So we're actually going to get an opportunity to take a look at the advanced player, advanced fantasy player's tome and referee's tome. The referee's tome is going to end up being like a standalone video, but the player's tome, that'll be a week from today. We'll be taking a look at that. So yes, the old school for the new year celebration continues to rock on. Sweet. Very nice. Okay. Let's jump on into the news because arriving from game brewer in Q1 is Hippocrates! And here's the deets on the game. And yes, I know how to pronounce Hippocrates. I'm just channeling my inner Bill and Ted. Travel back to Greece in 370 BCE on the island of Kos. Hippocrates! 
Hippocrates has just passed away, and that leads to a lot of doubt regarding the durability of his medical activities. As one of his successors, you lead a team of doctors with the goal of perpetually, uh, I'm sorry, perpetuating the treatment of patients in the temple of Asclepius. Hey, remember, I treat English like a second language. You think I'm going to get these Greek words out? Later known as the first hospital in history. Be the right successor of Hippocrates and increase your reputation so that patients from all around the Mediterranean will come with the hope of receiving the best treatment ever. Best treatment ever! The game lasts four rounds, with each round divided into five phases. First off, each player welcomes up to three patients in their hospital. You need to select your patients carefully, as all patients need urgent help, and some may be easier to treat than others. But make sure to help the most in need, or you will lose reputation as a doctor. Two, you have to rem... Remunerate? I am not uh, familiar with that word. Your doctors are risk their departure. Number three. In this phase, players try to hire new doctors and purchase medical kits. If a player obtains both, they receive a bonus. Then it's on to phase four. Now is the time to treat the patients. Players have to carefully puzzle and link the right patients to the right doctors to maximize their assets. And then, finally, players count victory and reputation points and prepare the board for the next round. Hippocrates combines auction bidding, tile placement, resource management, and more to create an exciting mix that will challenge each player to best manage their patients and try to become Hippocrates' worthy successor. Hippocrates is for one to four players, ages 12 and up, plays in around 90 to 120 minutes. It is going to carry an MSRP of $70 when it arrives this quarter. So it is an early 2022 release. This looks kind of interesting. I like the theme. Theme is, theme is kind of uh, different, a little different. Although I got to admit, uh, Sarah says, I believe, remunerate. Or remunerate? I don't know. Yeah. It's a fancy way to say paying the doctors. Doctors want that money. Yeah, see, nothing's changed in the in the centuries. Especially, you know, if you live in the U.S. Not so much in Europe, but you know how that goes. <laughs> this looks like it could be kind of cool. I was going to say... There was a game from Victory Point Games way back in the day, Healthy Heart Hospital, that was uh, a very interesting medical game that I, I'm surprised didn't do better and uh, actually get uh, like remade by the new Victory Point Games that's uh, part of, oh, what are they now? They're not Tabletop Tycoon. They're not... Game salute. Oh, maybe they are Tabletop Tycoon now. I don't know. They're always changing up their names. So, so it's Wednesday. I know we're not tackling a war game, but we can talk about some war gaming news because earlier today, Osprey Games revealed the latest entry in the Undaunted line of war games. And here's the deets on Undaunted Stalingrad. Unfortunately, this is the only image I've got to share with you. The time has come. We're proud to announce that in fall 2022, Osprey Games will publish Undaunted Stalingrad from the award-winning David Thompson and Trevor Benjamin. With the thrilling campaign of branching narratives, our latest game in the Undaunted series will contain more content than ever before. This standalone big box experience will challenge players with an immersive new narrative experience. Game designers David Thompson and Trevor Benjamin said, we're very excited about the release of Undaunted Stalingrad. We're digging deep into the story Battle of Stalingrad, a key battle not only for the Eastern Front, but for the entire Second World War. 
and we're doing it with a massive box full of content unlike anything Undaunted fans have seen before. We're introducing new units, actions, and ways to interact with the environment. What we're most excited about, though, is that we've created an integrated campaign where the results of each scenario impact the rest of the campaign's rich narrative and will set the stage for scenarios to come. Stalingrad, 1942. Before you awaits a grueling conflict in this keystone battleground, as the bullets and bombs tear the city asunder, only through wits and valor can you seize the cornerstone of the entire Eastern Front and change the course of history. A heavy burden rests on your shoulders. Every casualty suffered in battle will weaken your forces for the entire campaign. Every bomb blast and mortar shell leaves the very ground for which you are fighting in further ruin. Every inch lost to the enemy brings you closer to the jaws of defeat. Over the course of up to 15 branching scenarios, you will decide the fate of Stalingrad and perhaps the war itself. Even though the consequences of your actions will persist, the game itself can be fully reset and replayed, allowing you to explore every potential outcome. Undaunted Stalingrad is a monumental standalone game that expands the series' scope and challenge beyond anything that's come before. Through its branching campaign, you'll discover more of the hundreds of cards and tiles every time you play, featuring more than 430 unique illustrations by Roland McDonald and 150 evocative mission briefings written by acclaimed author Robbie McNiven. Immerse yourself in this campaign at the heart of the war. Undaunted Stalingrad will be for two players, ages 14 and up. Scenarios will play out in about 30 to 60 minutes. There's no MSRP info as of yet. I'm going to take a stab and say this is probably going to come out around $80 to $90. Just a guess. I could be absolutely wrong. But considering what we see for the usual Undaunted releases, and this is actually a big box standalone, which you can kind of tell this is going to be a big box just by the box art. Because if you're familiar with the Undaunted lineup of games, the boxes, I, they're not tiny. They're not like real small footprint, but they're smaller than a standard board game box. This, I think, is going to be pretty big because they even mention it is a big box experience. I know a lot of people are excited about this. I am pumped. I want to check this out. Got to wait till the fall. But I like Undaunted. My nephew Cameron digs Undaunted as well. He, uh, he's been enjoying it. I actually gave him Undaunted for Christmas. I gave him North Africa because, you know, I wanted to have some tanks and that in it for him as well. So, yes, I had to laugh because this image actually leaked a few days ago. And, and on the day it leaked out, I got an email from my contact over at Osprey Games with the news info and said, hey, uh, this is embargoed until today. I was like, aha. Omanal says this will be interesting as Stalingrad was a house-by-house -house slog with lots of snipers. Yes. If, uh, if you have not seen the movie Barbarians at the Gate or is Enemy at the Gates? I think it's Enemy at the Gates where it's the siege of Stalingrad. It is a pretty interesting movie. And to see that, I mean, just the entire city is just one big mass of rubble and eventually because everything's been bombed. Everything's been blown apart by mortars. And yeah, it's pretty wild. Enemy at the Gates. Thank you, Omenal. Yeah, Barbarians at the Gates is a business movie. Duh. All right, let's talk about some role-playing game news. I kind of touched upon this earlier, but the Old School Essentials Advanced Fantasy Tomes are back in stock at Exalted Funeral. Here's the skinny. First off, we've got the Advanced Fantasy Players Tome. The essential old-school game of fantastic adventure, monsters, and magic expanded with advanced character options and spells. There's a complete Players Tome. This book contains the complete game rules, 
13 fantastic classes. Acrobat, Assassin, Barbarian, Bard, Cleric, Druid, Fighter, Illusionist, Knight, Magic User, Paladin, Ranger, and Thief. As well as 10 classic races. Drow, Dyrgar. I, I, I'm never sure how that's pronounced. I always, I, I've heard it called Jirgar. You know, like the, like the evil dwarves or dark dwarves or whatever. Dwarves, elves, gnomes, half elves, halflings, half orcs, humans, no half humans. And Sniffneblin, another creature I'm never completely comfortable with how to pronounce that. Also has full equipment lists and over 200 weird and wonderful spells. Complete cleric, druid, illusionist, and magic user spell lists. Simple rules let imagination and fast-paced action take the spotlight. Clear, modern presentation makes the game easy to learn and quick to reference. It's compatible with decades of classic adventures and supplements. The 248-page tome is available in hardcover now at Exalted Funeral. For forty dollars, and that includes the PDF. You get the PDF as soon as you pay, or you can just get the PB uh, PDF alone. PB, you can get just the PB and J for maybe a lunchtime snack over at Drive Through RPG. You can grab the PDF alone at Drive Through RPG for fifteen dollars. Then we have the Advanced Fantasy Referees Tome. The Advanced Fantasy Referees Tome is the essential, you guessed it, referees guide to old school essentials advanced fantasy games with following content. There's guidelines, full guidelines for designing and running adventures, a selection of over 300 fearsome monsters to challenge adventurers of all levels. There's a horde of over 300 wondrous magic items. It includes all referee guidelines, monsters, and treasures from Old School Essentials Classic Fantasy, plus reams of additional material inspired by the 1970s Advanced First Edition rules. This 248-page tome is also back in print and available in hardcover over at Exalted Funeral, including the PDF, of course, for $40, or you can get the PDF alone over at Drive-Thru RPG for $15. Very nice to see this back in print and available here in the U.S. Got to point out these were uh, these were selling for like ninety to a hundred dollars on eBay, and it's kind of like, uh, but they're just I mean they're just regular books. They're not collectibles or anything like that. But that's how much demand there is for the advanced fantasy tomes for OSE. When I talk to uh, Gavin Norman, we are going to talk about the upcoming Kickstarter uh, to do another print run of the boxed sets as well. So we're going to see a box set for the basic game, and we're going to see a box set for the advanced fantasy. In case you weren't aware, advanced fantasy is not uh, kind of like a cleaned up first edition rules set. It is still BX, but it's got new content inspired by first edition AD&D. So keep that in mind. The rule system is still the same as the classic rules tome for old school essentials. On to the next news piece, the second edition of the popular Masreta role-playing game has arrived from Losing Games. Here's what I know. Take up the sword and don the whiskers of a brave mouse adventurer in Masreta. Mouse Ritter? Mouse? Mouse Ritter? I, I amused myself. It's a rules life fantasy adventure role playing game. Brutally fast, equally flavorful character creation gets you playing your mouse adventurer as quickly as possible. Physical card based inventory system minimizes bookkeeping 
and maximizes hard choices of how you're going to carry stuff. Dangerous and evocative magic is included with 15 spells to find and cast. Includes a generous toolbox of resources, which provide the game master with plenty of support to create their own mouse scale sandbox adventures. Delve into the ready to play adventure site of Stumpsville and explore further into the Earldom of Eck. Wouldn't it be more appropriate if it was Eek? I mean, they are mouses. Mazerita is built on the chassis of Into the Odd with new rules for setting, character generation, magical artifacts, and mouse scale adventures. This 48 page second edition of Mazerita is available as a pay what you want. It's got a suggested price of $8, but if you want, you can pay nothing. And of course, the publisher understands that. But it is pay what you want over at Drive Through RPG. I have heard excellent things about Mazdraita, Ritter, what Mouse Ritter. Hmm. We have ways of making you play this RPG. But yeah, I have heard uh, I have heard very very good things good things about this role playing game. I honestly thought the core book was longer, not just forty eight pages. But I've also heard really good things about Into the Odd. I've just never taken a peek at it because I tend to go for like horror and fantasy. I I don't go for like the like odd stuff, right? I don't go for a lot of science fiction-ish, you know, weirdness. But like I said, once again, I have heard really good things about this system. I've heard that uh, it's actually got some really good advice for game masters in it as well. So definitely check it out. This is uh, this is the second edition. So this is brand new. I believe it's going to be available as a little hardcover digest size book but i believe it comes from australia which is strange because i think the game itself is from a german designer a german language speaking designer so i thought it was kind of unusual that the hardcovers are going to come from australia so yeah so uh i guess americans will get stuck paying for the shipping like australians get stuck paying for shipping from here all right, on to the final news piece. Now available also as a pay what you want on drive through RPG is Heroes of Karulia from Black Fist Publishing. Here's the skinny on this pamphlet-sized fantasy role-playing game. Long ago, the three divine dragons created the mystical realm of Cerulea. I'm guessing. I'm guessing that's the pronunciation. A vast kingdom of green fields, blue lakes, deep forests, volcanic mountains, and hot deserts. I assume most deserts would be hot. The world is locked in a perpetual cycle of conflict between good and evil. The Guardian and the Paragon bravely defend the world against the Shadow King and his army of monsters. All three have been reborn numerous times throughout history. Now, the Shadow King is returned once more. But the Guardian and the Paragon are still nowhere to be seen. New heroes must come to Cerulea's aid. Heroes of Cerulea is an adventure tabletop role-playing game with lo-fi art and rules and high playability. It's heavily influenced by the classic Legend of Zelda games and by old-school role-playing. It contains video game logic. In this game, a key works in pretty much every lock, but disappears when it's used. Characters heal through eating food and increase their maximum health through finding heart containers. For some reason, random pots contain money, arrows, and bombs, and boomerangs can bring those items to you. Monsters are evil. NPCs are focused on one single thing. Dungeons are designed for heroes to solve. Suspend your disbelief and have fun playing. 
the game includes lo-fi rules. Characters have three attributes, might, bravery, and insight. Only players make action rolls based on their character's action. They're going to pick the most appropriative attributes and roll as many D4s as their value in that attribute. The highest individual die result will count. So one or two is a failed action with a consequence. A three is a successful action with a consequence. And a four is a successful action without any consequence. Additional fours mean extra successes. Obstacles and monsters have two stats. Harm, which is the amount of damage the hero might suffer. Each harm means you lose one heart. And then toughness, which is the complexity of the action or the fortitude of the monster. Each successful action reduces toughness by one step. When toughness is reduced to zero, the hero overcomes the obstacle or defeats the monster. Bosses are like monsters, except tougher and more dangerous. They also have particular action move sets, special abilities, and certain weaknesses for more memorable and dynamic confrontations. The game comes with a ready-to-play dungeon, Woodland Temple. Restless spirits are haunting the Gloomwood, and skeletal monsters have started to terrorize nearby farms. It's said there's an ancient temple somewhere deep within the woods. Can the heroes break the curse and lay the spirits to rest once more? Maybe. Maybe not. The Master Pamphlet also includes tools for creating your own dungeon. This 18-page PDF of Heroes of Cerulea is pay what you want over at DriveThruRPG. I also believe that this is coming to Kickstarter as a much more fleshed-out book. I think. I'm not positive, but I think so. I thought this looked kind of interesting. So I, I kind of get the, you know, I kind of get a kick out of the uh, 16-bit art. So I thought that was, that was kind of cool as well. 245 Trioxin has arrived in chat. So is Viper Dave. Good to see you both. Welcome aboard. All right, that is it for the news for tonight. Of course, I was just talking about drive through RPG and some of those news pieces. And of course, remember, the gaming gang, thus the Dispatch, is affiliated with the One Bookshelf site. So if you are going to visit, say, Drive Through RPG, please swing by thegaminggang.com first. Click on one of our banner ads. That way, if you happen to make a purchase, you get a little portion of that sale. And all those nickels, dimes, and quarters really do add up and help keep thegaminggang.com around. Also, if you like this video, if you like the channel, if you like what I do, if you dig the gaminggang.com, you can always buy me a cup of coffee or some soda by simply going over to paypal.me slash the gaming gang and making a small donation. And big thanks to the madman for uh, being our most recent contributor. So very cool. Or donator. I guess I'll say patron. So always appreciate the, uh, you know, the, the gestures people make towards uh, keeping the gaming gang around. Always appreciate that a lot. All right, I'm going to grab a sip here. So I was talking about how I received the Dungeons and Dragons Rules expansion gift set. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. And it does have that Monsters of the Multiverse book. I have found out that that book will be available individually on May 22nd. So it'll be available individually and it'll also be available digitally. So no doubt it'll be available for Roll20, D&D &D Beyond. Fantasy Grounds is my guess as well. So don't have too long of a wait. I know there are a lot of people out there, they were concerned that Wizards of the Coast would maybe wait until like November, December to 
provide, you know, that just stand alone. Got to just wait till May. Not too shabby. All right. I got a lot of stuff uh, we're uh, diving into. So I've got a trio of old school flavored role playing games we are going to take a look at tonight. And the first one I'm taking a peek at is Cairn, which is from author Yo Kai Gal. Artwork is provided by Blink Cosmic Ori. How did, why did it do that? Usually we have a much smoother transition to the camera. I got to point out, I wasn't sure I was going to get a stream out tonight because of all the silliness going on with the Microsoft update. So Microsoft did an update on my computer down here in the duct tape studios. I wasn't getting any sound for the, for the video software. I was like, oh, again? I had to keep messing around and finally got everything together and working at five minutes to seven. So I'm surprised there haven't been more screw-ups so far in, in this stream. So we're going to take a look at Cairn. Once again, it is uh, written by Yokai Gal with artwork provided by Cosmic Ori. And it's a 24-page zine. It's available for $3.58 on Amazon. You can grab the PDF absolutely free over at DriveThruRPG, or you can go over to cairnrpg.com. <laughs> Eddie says, I hate Microsoft. I don't necessarily hate Microsoft. I don't appreciate Microsoft treating my, my computer as if it's their computer. It's, it's one thing if they had purchased the computer for me, yeah, then update whenever you want. But if I have it set to not update at a specific, you know, period of time and it still updates, then what the hell is the point? <laughs> Flaming Heron says, funny, uh, I'm not the only person. They've heard had problems with sound after a Windows update recently. Well, the funny thing is, I didn't have any problems with the actual sound through the sound bar. I just had an issue with the microphone and the software that I utilize that runs into the uh, program that I use to do the stream. All right, let's take a look at the back here real quick. It's an adventure game inspired by the likes of Into the Odd and Nave. Explore a mysterious woodland filled with all manner of creatures Fay and fell, pillage ancient barrows, steal powerful spell books, and slay horrid beasts. Cool. Let's jump on in here. Of course, obviously enough, this is going to be a rules light game. So, uh, first of all, we can see it's classless. <laughs> kind of like me. I like the artwork, though. This is kind of cool. It says, uh, Karen is an adventure game for one facilitator and at least one other player. So players act as hardened adventurers exploring a dark, and mysterious wood filled with strange folk, hidden treasure, and unspeakable monstrosities. Hey, you could always use Rack and Veil. Use uh, Rack and Veil with this. That'd be pretty cool. So it's death. Characters may be powerful, but they are also vulnerable to harm in many forms. Fiction first. Dice do not always reflect an obstacle's difficulty or its outcome. Growth. Players are changed through in-world advancement, gaining new skills and abilities by surviving dangerous events and overcoming obstacles. Neutrality. The warden's role is to portray the rules, situations, NPCs, and narrative clearly while acting as a neutral arbiter. Cool. See, I don't have any real problem um, sharing a bunch of the pages here because the PDF's available for free. So, so we've got some principles for wardens. Talking about information, difficulty. So we've been talking a lot about the old school approach to role-playing games. And 
mainly we talk about it as geared towards fantasy role playing games. And one of the things that one of the tenants that I consider as part of the old school renaissance is the fact that the player characters should have information. The player characters shouldn't remain in the dark on a lot of things. You should give the players enough information for them to make decisions about situations that you put in front of them as opposed to try and but and when I say information, I don't mean sit there with an info dump because I know there are a lot of dungeon masters and game masters out there who love nothing more than to sit there and regale their players with a, a massive lore info dump. And they think the players enjoy that. The players don't. The reality is the vast majority of players care about the game world as it applies to their character, not to everything else out there. But uh, I know a lot of like the modern style, we talk about this from time to time, where you're rolling against the, you know, a, a challenge number, target number to know things. I don't, uh, I don't subscribe to that approach. I try to keep my, my players relatively informed. Now, I'm not saying that if it's a, some mysterious thing, I'm going to just be like, oh, yeah, okay, well, it's this. <laughs> it's like, okay. All right, so difficulty, danger, choice. Give players a solid choice to force outcomes when the situation lulls. There you go. Use binary, so A or B. Yes. So what's going to be? Death by hanging or death by crucifixion? Which one? Your choice, A or B. So we got principles for players, character creation, names and backgrounds for just randomly generating, character traits, starting gear, spell books. So we got rules. We got three abilities, strength, dexterity, willpower. So, and then you have save. So, Saves are, it looks here like a save is essentially any role that you're making regarding your ability or abilities, I should say. Healing, armor, NPCs, wealth and treasure. Scars, there you go. Roll up some random scars there. We got a little bestiary. Got five. Oh, I'm sorry, I take that back, six. We got the root goblin, we've got the hooded men, the cobble hounds, the wood troll, the frost elf, and the boggart. Oh, well, well. And of course, creating your own monsters. Then we got a hundred spells, all summed up in a single sentence. Something I always like. Oh, hey, that's a kind of kind of nice character sheet there. That strength, dex, will. Draw your little character sheet. There's your inventory. Your armor, your hit points. You're deprived. I almost, I was almost like, oh, you're depraved. What? A summary of the rules. And that is Cairn. Cool. Nice. Straight to the point. Not a lot of fluff. Getting right into it, getting down and dirty. Once again, as I pointed out, you can download the PDF absolutely free over at Drive Through RPG, or you can grab this on Amazon like I did for three dollars and fifty eight cents. Keep in mind, this is not a review copy. I purchased it, so I wanted to uh, get some, you know, like smaller publisher items for. Uh, the old school for the new year celebration to share with you. So that is Cairn. Next up, we've got Mothership. This is the first edition of Mothership. I know there was a very recent Kickstarter 
for a second edition of Mothership. I have heard really good things about Mothership. And this is the player survival guide, which is essentially the rule book. There are a lot of adventures and supplements for Mothership that are out there. So that is another thing I have heard about this as well. So this is kind of a horror survival, science fiction sort of RPG. So think along the lines of Alien, I would say. So we're going to jump on in here. Now, this is actually written and illustrated by Sean McCoy. This, this comes from Tuesday Night Games. The 48-page zine, uh, which is essentially what all three of these pretty much are, zine size or digest size. This soft cover is available over at Exalted Funeral. It does provide you with the PDF as well. For $15, that's how I picked this up. Or you can pay what you want over at Drive Through RPG. The suggested price is $7. But uh, you can do that as well if you just want to snag the PDF. So we get our character creation. Wow, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty small. <laughs> that font is mighty, mighty small there. <laughs> I guess uh, that looks like that's your character sheet. That is an interesting looking character sheet. So we've got our character creation. So uh, I'm taking a guess. Maybe we're looking at a percentile based system. Because it says you're going to use 10 sided dice for everything in the game. It says Mothership uses D10s for everything. So grab a handful and get rolling. You'll roll six for each stat and record the results in order, starting with strength, then speed intellect, and finally combat. A stat of 30 is about average. But don't get too hung up on the numbers right now. So it says pick a class and note their starting saves. Mark your starting skills and spend your starting skill points. Take note on how your class deals with stress and panic. That is uh, something else that I've heard about Mothership is uh, the rules as far as like stress and and uh, like sanity, things like that are pretty interesting. Let's pick a starting loadout and roll a random trinket and patch. All right. I like the presentation of this. This is, this is really nicely presented. Although I have to point out the font here is this is just this. I mean, I can read it. So as example, Abel is trying to open a rusted shut airlock on a derelict spacecraft. So I mean, I can read it, but it is pretty small. Yeah, here we go. We've got, yeah, it's percentile based. Mr. Eddie T says they uh, like the concise form of Cairn. Yeah, I, I like games that just, you know, get right to the point. I've... I've played and run enough role-playing games that I don't necessarily need the whole lead-up to, you know, the party. Just start the party right away. I don't necessarily need the, the three or four pages about what is a role-playing game. So I always kidded around that if I ever wrote a role-playing game, my section would be where it said, what is a role-playing game? I would have, the book you have in your hands. And that would be it. That would, that would be the extent of it. So we've got situational advantages and disadvantages, critical hits and failures, opposed checks, skills. Well, looks like we've got quite a few skills. Good mix. And it looks as if the skills build into other skills. So first aid leads to pathology, which leads into surgery. Pathology can also lead into xenobiology. So can botany. So can genetics. Nice. That's cool. I like that. I have the understanding that I, I believe Mothership is more designed for 
very short campaigns or one shot because I believe it's supposed to be pretty, pretty, uh, lethal. So here we got our saves. There are four saves, sanity, fear, body, and armor. Sanity is your ability to explain away logical inconsistencies in the universe, rationalize and make some sense out of chaos, detect illusions and mimicry, and think quickly under pressure. Fear is how well you cope with emotional trauma. It covers not only fear, but also loneliness, depression, or any other emotional surge. Body is your reflexes and how well you can resist hunger, disease, or any other organism that might attempt to invade your insides. Ha! <laughs> I'd, uh, I'd like to uh, attempt to uh, resist this. This organism that's uh, trying to get inside me. We've got crisis checks, food and water, oxygen. Earning credits. Hit location, damage, healing, and death. I gotta say, this game seems like it's got a, a some meat on its bones. I was thinking, yeah, it's gonna be you know another really super rules light. So we get our weapons. I would have to say that uh, if you're interested in the alien role playing game from Free League Publishing, but you don't like their rule set. Right here. I could easily see people porting over those adventures to something like this. So we've got our random trinkets, our random patches. Actually, I am a rocket scientist. Game over. Ah, game over, man. Game over. Hiring mercenaries. Scum. There you go. Motivation. Stress. How do I relieve stress? I'm sure drugs are in there. Alcohol, sex, I'm sure it's all in there. Space travel, hyperspace, basic ship classes. Oh, so there's like a, we've got like a ship sheet. Ship design, modules, hull, and weapons. I could see probably using this uh, rule set for something along the lines of the old uh, Sean Connery movie Outland. So we've got ship to ship combat, experience points. Okay, so here's here's our ship layout. And here is our player character sheet. And then a cheat sheet, kind of a play raid, basic, giving us the basic mechanics of the game, as well as how his combat work out. Nice. <laughs> this is cool. I like this. I'll, do a re I'll, I'll be doing reviews of these, of course. Although I know it's kind of silly doing a review of the first edition of Mothership when we got a second edition on the horizon. But I'm going to take a guess. It's I would say the second edition is probably not changing a lot to the core of the game. It's probably just more goodies. All right. And then finally, we have the original edition campaign, which is written by Eric Johansson, which I can find kind of funny because I actually have a cousin named Eric Johansson, but this isn't written by him. This is a 50-page zine, and it is available on Amazon for $7.90. I was sent this as a review copy. So, once again, I picked up Mothership from Exalted Funeral. So there's nothing on the back there. So let's take a look. My understanding with this is that these are kind of um, some, like, Game Master advice, some house rules, and so on, like some, like, little modular add-ons 
to original Dungeons and Dragons. That's why it's kind of got the sort of look like the old OD and D releases. So David Weisberger has popped in asking, what did they miss? Well, you missed Mothership and you've missed Cairn. Now we're taking a look at the original edition campaign. So we've got uh, rolling for attributes as well as the attribute values, effects of the modifiers, rolling for hit points, character classes. So paladin, barbarian, ranger, and druid are optional classes. Your prime requisite, fighter, thief, cleric, wizard, paladin, barbarian, ranger. Give me a breakdown of what their abilities are. There's the druid. Hero status. No player character starts as a hero, even though that might be the intent. A newly created character only has about a year of experience. Every piece of gold and every point of experience will bring the character closer toward hero status. If the character survives long enough to become fourth level. That character is considered a true hero. And that would be reflected in the campaign world. One aspect of OD&D is that the player characters do not <laughs> go up to like 20th level. In fact, once once I hit about third or fourth level, I mean, they're pretty powerful characters. So we've got task resolution. So here we've got target numbers. So essentially, you're rolling 2d6. So an easy challenge is a 7 or higher. Normal challenge is 9 or higher. Hard challenge is 11 or more. And... Your modifiers, no doubt, are your attribute modifiers. Looks like the Game Master can grant a plus one or plus two bonus. This is up to two applicable attributes may each supply a plus one bonus or a minus one penalty. As an example, dexterity and strength may be used to attempt to jump a deep chasm. Strength and charisma might be used to intimidate a non-player character. We got our dungeon maps talking about level of detail. So keeping in mind, this is not an actual rule set. These are just some options for you to utilize if you are playing OD and D. Forcing a stuck door. Got our creature reactions. We were talking a little bit about morale last night. I'm a firm believer in utilizing morale with uh, encounters. I always like to to get a reaction roll so that because nothing, in my opinion, nothing is more boring than going to a room. Oh, these these creatures are there. Oh, they attack. Going to the next room. Oh, these creatures are there. They attack. Going to the next room. Oh, there's these monsters there. They attack. All right, we leave. We go into the wilderness. All right, so you wander along for about 10 minutes, and you're attacked by these creatures. And I know there are people out there, I've said it time and time, that just love rolling dice, and they, they'd sit there all night long, just wave after wave of monsters attacking, and they're having a great time. Uh, taint me. Taint me, Dooley. Taint me. All right. Heavy and light weapons. Broken shields. Yes. The sundered shield, which is very popular. That's a, that's a popular optional rule people love to throw into old school fantasy role-playing games. Is uh, you can, usually what it is, is you could, have your shield be destroyed and it absorbs all the damage from a single attack. Got ranged weapons, rate of fire, injury and death. Bandages. So one thing about the old school fantasy role-playing games that I am not super keen on is 
how long it takes to recover hit points. Because it's like, oh, well, you know, if you rest all day, you get one back. Now, I am also not a proponent of, well, if you sleep for eight hours, you get all of your hit points back. Nah, no, no, no. It doesn't work that way. I do like the, you know, roll one of your hit dice and get those back during, you know, a short rest where you're, you know, tending to wounds and things like that. All right, so we, we've got some tables here with different gear. We've got our experience points for the various different classes for different levels going up to level 12. Spells, magic, and miracles. Different equipment. Armor values. Encumbrance, yeah, that's a, that's a rule that a lot of people hand-waved back in the day. I'm not going to sit here and figure out what all this stuff weighs. Recruiting hirelings and henchmen, time and money. Stocking dungeons, done fast, theater of the mind. During play, the characters are regularly going on expeditions into dangerous areas such as abandoned temples, castles, caves, and dungeons. When this happens, we go into more detail as compared to when characters are traveling in the wilderness. So why is to keep description short and to the point, while at the same time conveying as much of the mood as possible for the given area? This way we maintain a good flow. Flow is very important. But that comes with experience of running games understanding uh, how to keep good flow going, and then sometimes kind of altering the flow a little bit. Sometimes things are going fast and furious, and then kind of slow things down a little bit. And all of a sudden, oh, my God, here we go again. I, I tend to do that a lot when I'm running Call of Cthulhu. All right, that is Original Edition Campaign. Additional rules for fantasy medieval campaigns playable with dice, paper, pencil, and your imagination from Eric Johansson. And once again, this soft cover is available over at Amazon for $7.90. I do not believe this is available in PDF. I can tell you right now, it is not available in PDF over at DriveThruRPG. I did not take a look at DMs Guild, because sometimes they actually have stuff that, that's not on drive through RPG, but I don't think this is out in PDF. So that was original edition campaign. We also took a peek at Mothership, and we also looked at Cairn. So the old school for the new year celebration just continues to rock on. Of course, I will have reviews of these in the very near future. I can't guarantee that it'll be part of this month's celebration, but I will try. All right, swing on over to the older camera, and I will wrap on up. So nice. Very nice. So Mr. Eddie T says, a trio of cool stuff. Yeah, I, you know, I try to share a little love for, you know, smaller publishers and things like that. It's not all about the Paizos and the Wizards of the Coast and the GMTs and AEGs of the world. I like to, you know, share some love, you know, spread some coverage here and there. That's how, that's how games get popular. That's how people learn and find out about things. That's how I've, I've stumbled across stuff over the years. All right. Anyway, that is it for tonight's show next week. As I mentioned earlier, we are going to be focusing on old school essentials from Necrotic Gnome. And on Monday's show, we are going to take a look at the classic rules. So we're going to take a look at this rules tome here. Tuesday, I will be interviewing Gavin Norman of Necrotic Gnome. And we'll take a look at the first issue of Carcass Crawler which is the OSE zine. And then on Wednesday, 
we will be taking a look at the Old School Essentials Advanced Fantasy Players Tome, which is in transit to me right now. Because as I had mentioned in that earlier news piece, they are back in stock here in the U.S. at Exalted Funeral. So we're going to take a look at that, and then I will shoot a standalone video that will be out on Thursday of next week that will show you the referee's tome for the OSE Advanced Fantasy. So plenty going on. I might even do an interview with uh, Kristen over at Exalted Funeral and maybe have that on the 31st because they have a lot of small publisher role-playing games. I mean, that they're, a, they're effectively your source for old school essentials here in the U.S. So, and they've got, that's where I picked up the ultraviolet grasslands in the Black City. I already told you I picked up my copy that we just took a peek of, of Mothership. So it uh, seems like a, a pretty cool company. So might have an interview with uh, Kristen from Exalted Funeral uh, right at the end of the month. All right. If you like this video, by all means, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't already. And if you do subscribe, ding that bell. It'll not only let you know when the dispatch streams live Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday evenings right here on YouTube. It'll also let you know when I upload other videos, such as tomorrow's first look at the Dungeons and Dragons rules expansion gift set from Wizards of the Coast. We are going to dive in. We are going to take a look at Monsters of the Multiverse. That's right. And of course, we'll take a peek at the the Dungeon Masters screen that's in here as well. So stay tuned for that. I got other goodies coming this weekend as well. I'm going to take a look at the uh, Tales from the Loop, the board game. So I will be doing an unboxing of that, and uh, I will have my review of uh, Dungeons & Dragons Original Adventures Reincarnated Volume 2, Isle of Dread. So that'll be up this weekend as well. So was, there's goodies. Goodies coming just because I'm not streaming doesn't mean there isn't content for you to take a peek at. All right. So those of you who watch live, thank you very much. Always appreciate that. Of course, if you took part in chat, bonus points, you get a plus one bonus, extra experience points for taking part in chat and keeping me company. Of course, always want to point out when you're not watching videos on the gaming gang channel be sure to visit the gaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news reviews and a whole lot more any of the news pieces i talk about on the show there's articles about them with links over on the gaminggang.com the following day uh well usually like 3 a.m is when they post 3 a.m my time let's see uh flaming heron says thanks for the stream you're very welcome uh, everybody, uh, enjoy the rest of your week. Have a great weekend coming up as well. And those of you who don't have an opportunity to watch live, thank you also for taking time out of your busy life and, uh, taking a peek at this goofball pontificating much obliged. Thank you kindly. All right. I will see everybody on Monday when we took, take a took when we take a look at Old School Essentials, the classic rules town. And here's hoping each and every one of you gets to enjoy plenty of great gaming with your gang. See you Monday. Oh, hey, you're still here. Well, if that's the case, by all means, subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel by clicking right here. Check out the latest episode of the Gaming Gang Dispatch or find out what YouTube recommends you check out from the channel. And of course, once again, I'm Jeff McAleer. Thanks for watching.